Hi guys, all right, I get asked a lot about what is the McCaffrey method? What's the concept behind it? Doc, how did you come up with this? How did you create it? How did you invent MMR? What did you do for all these things and why? So one of the key components that I look at when, I, when I'm looking at healthcare is what's missing? What was missing out there? When you look at all the different fields and you know, from physical therapy to medicine to chiropractic care to acupuncture, what's missing? And what was missing was a commonality. What was missing was a blend taking things together and looking at the best of all the different fields and seeing how they complement one another and seeing how they work together in a synergy instead of always breaking them into individual pieces. So my method has really been a blend of my 20 years of experience and then my grandfathers and my uncles and my mentors before that. So we're looking at 100 to 150 years of healthcare prior to my own life and existence. And it's just the blending of these things together. So I went through and I looked at where I had holes in my care, where I thought were holes. And I was you know, intrigued years ago, uh, a doctor by the name of Hans Selye came up with an idea. He called it a general adaptation syndrome. And he went through and he found that when people were becoming ill or sick, when they got in trouble, when they got hurt, they got injured, it wasn't always obvious as to why. Sometimes, all right, I fell down, I sprained my ankle, that was easy, and we had a great system in place for that. But sometimes people would come in and they'd have GI problems, upset stomach, they'd have heartburn, they'd have nervous conditions, they'd have ulcers for no reason, and they would run all these tests and exams and they couldn't find out why. They could never really figure out the, the cause behind it, so they would wait. And then three months, six months, eight months would go by, they'd retest, not anything yet, go home, we'll wait again. And then wait and see, and wait and see, and you kept hearing wait and see. But what ended up happening over time, a year, year and a half, it all of a sudden a disease would pop in. And they'd be like, oh, I've got this disease state. Now that, oh, that must have been what was wrong all along. Well, I didn't buy that. I didn't like the idea that you had to wait. And as I looked at Selye's work and all that he was doing, I started noticing there was a pattern to this. The pattern came about that you would have symptoms that would precede a disease state sometimes months or years in advance. And if you could catch things before they would break, you could then prevent them. You could turn the boat around and not go over the falls. So I came up with something I call the McCaffrey Method. Now it's based around this concept over here. I believe stress is the cause of all disease. A doctor that said it was nominated for eight different Nobel Prizes. I've never been nominated for one. So I figured he's probably right. So if we look at that and we say, if stress is the cause of all disease, then all I had to do was figure out what was the cause of all stress. Well, it turns out it's men. Now we laugh at that and we think, all right, men are causing all of our stress. It's mechanical problems. It's emotional problems. It's nutritional. Now when you take that triangle and you look at this and you say, well, what does mechanical really mean? It's the anatomy. It's the bones, the joints, the ligaments, the tendons. It's the structure of the body. Then we look at the E, which is the emotional side. Well, it's not just emotions. It's not just terror and fear and anguish and frustration. It's also the neurology. It's also the hormones that the body has to deal with in balance. And then we look at the nutritional side or the N in men. And that deals with what we eat, what we drink, the air we breathe, but it also deals with viruses and bacteria. My grandfather used to always say, it's what you put in the body or on the body makes up the N. Now, when we look at this thing, we say, okay, well, this is the case. So mechanical stuff, that's physical things, right? That's things that you can really see. It's organic causes of disease. Then we get into the nutritional side and we say, well, gosh, okay, that's the stuff we eat or drink. And the emotions are what we're thinking. It's auto-suggestion, right? We'll take an example. Look at someone who has stomach ulcers. We've been trying for decades now to blame it on some kind of a bacteria or something in the gut. But the reality of it is that Helobacter pylori that they blame it on is only there 50% of the time or less. So it's like, well, if it's only there half the time, it can't cause 100% of the ulcers. There's got to be another reason. But then we think, well, who gets ulcers? Oh, our worriers, our obsessive compulsive personality types, our real type A's. Those are the people who develop these problems. So we learn that, gosh, that emotional side of that triangle, it's a big piece. And it affects the mechanical side, which is also the nutritional side. So they all blend together. So when you're looking at the method, and what I did, I said, okay, if this is the case, then we need to treat the body like a bucket. We're looking at a big bucket and we want it to hold water. And all we have to do is find out where your holes are. So we go through there and you can say, oh, I come in, doc, my neck's hurting and I, I need help with that. 
All right, everyone immediately goes, well, let's do stretches and exercises and adjusting. That's what physical therapy would do, right? That's what chiropractic would do. Acupuncture might put some needles in to help with the pain. But the point of it is, are they really looking for the cause? Or are they just chasing one of the many, many symptoms that we have? And I've learned that symptom chasing doesn't work. So my method was based around the idea of not to chase your symptoms, but to restore normal function. Examine, examine, examine is the rule. Go through and examine where the stresses are. How many mechanical holes in your bucket do you have? How many emotional ones and nutritional ones do you have? If you've got 50 of these things, chasing one of them isn't going to do you a lot of good. You got to go through and balance it and try to repair as many as you can. And what's an interesting fact, it follows this idea, you know, of what we found as we've been doing this over the years. You know, I always felt there was a problem there. I just didn't know what it was. And then what I found after I started doing this was that as we started repairing these little holes in the bucket, all of a sudden big problems started going away. I didn't have to chase lupus and Crohn's and cancers and celiac. I had to fix the bucket. And as I started balancing out the mechanical stresses and getting rid of the emotional ones and helping people deal with the nutritional ones and changing their diet and helping digestion, all of a sudden fixing the little holes started to take a toll on the big ones. So their disease states, all the things that were wearing the body into the ground and tearing it apart, I could now get at by balancing the whole thing. The key is you have to find the cause. A good friend of mine and a mentor of mine always told me, you know, you got, it's like a tire. You got to find the leak. You can pump air in all day long. That's what you see medicine doing. That's what all these other therapies are doing. They're pumping air in the tire. But if you don't find the leak, you can never keep up. So if you can find the leaks and repair them, patch the leak over, then when you pump air and all of a sudden the tire can get down the road. And that's really what life is all about, guys. It's about looking at the body as though it's a home. It's a rental property. When I work with patients, initially when I say examine, 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 I mean I'm going to go through your property and say, oh gosh, you're missing a window here. You need a, you got a hole in the floor over here. The heat system's not working. You need to paint the door. Paint's low priority, right? But the things that are going to be uncomfortable have to be dealt with first. So you focus on what someone wants as a patient, but the whole time in the background, I'm trying to fix the house. I'm trying to make it livable because the reality of it is we're only renting this. We're in it for about 75, 78 years, somewhere there on average. We're renting this property. Make it as nice as you can so you can live in it as comfortably as possible. That's how it works. That's my method is a blend of acupuncture and chiropractic care and osteopathic care. I do bone setting. I do Irish indigenous medicine and hundreds and hundreds of other little things from herbology to digestion to you name it. It's a blend. And the fun part about this, I get asked this all the time, Doc, how do you learn stuff? How do you learn all these things? You know so much. I don't know so much. I'm just well-read and taught. I've had phenomenal mentors throughout my career, but I use this method that I examine someone to learn. When I first came out of school years ago, because of my grandfathers and my uncles, I had a very strong mechanical background. That was my foundation. Howard Loomis then I met. And Howard introduced me to the nutritional side. And he introduced me to digestion and enzymes and breaking food down and absorbing. So now all of a sudden my nutritional side of my triangle got stronger. But I noticed as I was treating patients, I had a weakness. My emotional side was weak. So I had to go find what to do there. And I thought, well, it's neurology, it's hormones, it's emotions. So I started studying natural hormone therapy. I got into saliva tests. I got into all these things to strengthen that side, and I did. But guess what happened when I strengthened that side? It weakened one of my others. And so I thought to myself, okay, I got to go find something now to help my mechanical. So I invented the field of MMR, muscle memory reintegration. And as that got better, guess what? That got weak again. So into that field, I got into energetic psychology and all these things to help balance people. Today, I'm working on Irish indigenous medicine, which is here again. I just keep following it around and around and around. And every new problem that comes under my care that I stumble upon or I struggle with or I don't see the answer, it forces me to look elsewhere. And I'm constantly hunting, constantly questing, and I'm doing it globally. You can't do it in one spot. So I look at Ayurvedic medicine. I've looked at Greek medicine, Nanami. I've looked at Irish medicine. I've looked at Russian bone setting and English bone setting in different fields from around the planet looking for ways to help people. That's the McCaffrey method. It's evolving. 
It's got a strong foundation and a base built on the things I just suggested, and it changes people's lives. This is how you fix chronic degenerative things. You find the bucket, you see how many holes there are, and you patch as many as you can. And in doing that, you get your life back.